So what drives the supply chain resilience, assuming that the claim goes down that supply chain? Clearly the number of uh, claims that the system deals with in BAU, BAU, as I said, it is sized to be able to do it. We are a disaster restoration business. We have uh, volume, capacity in reserve, as do all of our competitors, as do most of you as businesses in the room. Whether you're in the, uh, in the insurer hot seat or whether you're in one of the other seats of the suppliers who are engaged in the process, you have plans for that capacity to come into place, whether that's warm bodies that are going to go out on site and do stuff, or whether it's equipment that you hold in reserve or you can move from one part of the country to another, or indeed that you can bring in from overseas. We all have those plans. I would say that the best of insurers engage with their supply chains to tie up and engage all of those plans, link all those plans to, together so they work. I would say also that there's a lot of insurers that don't. They pay lip service to that. And the problem is that if any one of us in this uh, supply chain, in this model, um, supporting customers fails, actually we're all tarred with the same brush. So isn't there a requirement for us all to try to cooperate a little bit so we all get a little bit better? That confidence and willingness to co co collaborate and cooperate, though, stems from the way that we're all treated on a day-to-day -day basis.